Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome to another one of my Pipedrive training videos. In this video, I want to show you how you can use the goals feature in the insights within Pipedrive to set up sales targets and track key performance indicators, either for yourself or for your sales team in Pipedrive. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, please feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you do want one-on-one -on -one support with Pipedrive, optimizing your account, um, training your sales team, or even automating your sales process, then have a look at the link in the description below to learn more about my Pipedrive consulting options. So let's get into this video. And the goals feature that I mentioned before is located in the insights tab here on the left. So this is where you'll find things like your dashboards and all of your reports. And if you haven't noticed already, there is this section of the sidebar for goals. And firstly, it's organized into active and past goals. As you'll see shortly, when we set up a goal, you can set the duration for how long that goal is applicable for. And so depending on the time frame, the goal can either be active right now, like it's in progress right now, or it's a previous goal that has now expired. Uh, you can see I have one active goal at the moment. You can see this is assigned to this user, Paul Miners. It's tracking deals one for all of my pipelines. And I have a monthly target to close 5,000 uh, USD per month. And so you can see here on my chart, this little line running along the bottom, that's my $5,000 target. And you can see some months I'm exceeding here, some months I'm underperforming. This is just a demo account, so the data in here is actually um, not, not accurate, but you can get, you get an idea of um, what's going on here. So that's a really good example of a really simple, probably the most important sales goal that you might have either for yourself or for your team is how much revenue do you want to generate? Now, let's show how to set that up and show, uh, I'm going to talk through some different types of goals that you can create as well. So to start a new goal, I'm going to click this plus button here to add a new goal. And you'll be guided through how to set up different goals. And as you can see, we can either create deal-based goals. So we've got things like um, we can have goals to add a certain number of deals per month. That would be really useful for maybe you have people on your team who are more prospectors or more in a marketing role and their job is to get new leads for your business. Um, they might have a goal to create 100 new deals per month because you need lots of deals in the top of your sales funnel so that you can close a certain number at the bottom. So deals added would be a really good goal for people doing that kind of outreach type activity for your business. Deals progressed is where you can have a goal to move a deal to a certain stage in your pipeline. So if I just show you setting that up, what I can do here is say, for this sales pipeline, I have a goal which is to get uh, a certain number of deals to this meeting arranged stage. So this is a really useful goal. I've worked with clients where they have different people on their sales team who are in charge of booking meetings for sales reps. So this deal progress goal could be for those types of people where maybe they're not closing the deal, but they are still important to um, progress deals through that pipeline to key stages. So that's your deal progress goal. And then you have deals one. So this is for the closers, uh, people who are closing those deals, actually getting invoices sent, contracts signed, that kind of thing. And so to show you how I set up this goal before, uh, firstly, I can choose, do I want this goal to be either a company goal? So it's just um, for my entire team, we have a company goal to hit a certain revenue target. I can set up a team goal. So if I'm on the professional plan, I can say, right, the Auckland team has this target and the Wellington team has this other target. Or I can set up a user specific goal. So, um, you know, I can assign this to a specific salesperson. I can choose, do I want this to apply to all pipelines or just a particular sales pipeline? And then what is the metric that I'm tracking? I can either track the value of deals that I want to win, which is probably what most people will do, or you can track the count, the number of deals that you've won. Uh, again, I think most people want to track value, you know, closing a million dollars versus closing 10 deals of 100,000 each. You know, what, what's more important to you? So I'm gonna say, right, this is a uh, monthly target, and I'm just gonna set it as being applicable for this year. So I'm just gonna set my duration here. And as I mentioned before, these dates are what determine whether the goal is active, which this would be right now, or at the end of the year, this would then go into my past goals. And finally, the last step is to really just insert a target. So I can say, right, I need to close $10,000 of revenue per month, and I can save that goal now. And you can see it's now part of my um, uh, goal section. So you can see actually it's slightly different to my previous goal. The time frame here is slightly different. Last year, this is my new goal for this year. 
To just look at a couple more of these different types of goals. So we've talked about some of the deal-based ones and, and who they would be applicable for. You can also set up activity-based goals. So some examples might be, let's say, if you want to track a certain activity, maybe it's, um, again, talking about that example before, maybe you have people on your team who are booking calls or meetings for sales reps on the team. You could say, right, um, you could have a meeting booked activity type and say, right, you need to complete, let's say, 10 of these every month. You need to complete a certain number of those activities. Um, so this is a really useful one. If you want to set up goals for your team to make a certain number of calls, complete a certain number of discovery sessions, send out a certain number of agreements or proposals or quotes, um, you can set those up as activity-based goals. Now, a little tip when you're going to do that is if you go into your company settings, you want to go to the activities section and you can add your own custom activity types. So there we are. I'm under the activities tab here. I can then add a new activity type. So let's say, you know, um, booked discovery meeting. I could set that up as a new type of uh, activity and that way I could then link a goal to that specific type of activity for a certain person on my team. So just something to keep in mind when you are doing activity-based goals, you may want to create a new activity type depending on what it is that you are trying to track. The final type of goal I want to show is the uh, revenue forecast goal. Now this is available only to users on the professional plan. But if you are on the professional plan, you can create a revenue goal. And the way this gets used, if I create a quick goal, is it's similar to a sales target. So let's say I am uh, assigning this goal of closing $5,000 per month, and that's just for this year. Let's go ahead and save that now. You can see you can see it's slightly just slightly different to the rev normal revenue goal. Uh, I get this increasing line here. This is my um, forecast target. So you can see at the start of the year, my forecast is to close $5,000 of deals. And then for February, it increases to 10. March, it increases to 15 and so on, adding $5,000 per month. And so you can see for sort of longer sales cycles, let's say, you know, it takes three, six months to close a deal. If you are putting an expected close date on your deals, let's say you have a deal that's expected to be closed in June, you would be able to see that forecasted goal in here. In fact, let's go and um, set that up now. So let me take one of my deals. Uh, let's take this Coke one. We'll just attach some products to it quickly. And let's just say, uh, put a $10,000 value on this. And let's say we're gonna close this in the end of May. So I'll put my expected close date on there. So I'm forecasting that revenue. And I'll just refresh my report. And there you go. Now you can see the effect of adding that uh, $10,000 deal uh, to my forecast. And so, yeah, like I said, I think this type of revenue forecast goal is particularly useful for those longer sales cycles. So if you haven't already, I'd highly recommend you get into the goals feature in Pipedrive and set up some sales target, either for your company, for different teams, or for individual users in your account. It's a really useful way of uh, tracking everyone's progress. And I think the other key benefit of using this goals feature is that it really encourages people to use the platform consistently um, because people want to be acknowledged for their progress. You know, if they close the sale, they want that to be represented in Pipedrive. So it forces people to kind of use the system correctly and it encourages good behavior and best practices to be followed uh, because people can really clearly see, am I on track to my goal or not? And so I think it, it really encourages that good behavior. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.